We are in day number four of continuing to press forward. Come on, how many of you believe that God has some beautiful things in store for you this year? And we're going to continue to, to, to press forward. And as we always say, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And hey, maybe you're watching this later on, on, on the recording when we send it out. We just want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for the intentionality. Thank you so much for the pressing forward. Thank you so much for, hey, being intentional of choosing God first. Come on, we can never go wrong when we allow God to go first. We can never go wrong when we apply some Matthew 6.33 in our life. And what better way, family, come on, what better way than to choose God first, to seek him first, to actually sit in his presence, say, hey, God, begin to speak, begin to teach, begin to begin to transform me in such a mighty way that, hey, this, this is going to be a fast that we have. We will never forget. Come on. Well, family, hey, may, may, maybe you're new. Maybe this first time you, you're joining us. Hey, we, we mentioned this each and every time that we start. We've been going through the book of Joshua. Come on. From chapter one. And today we're going to jump into we're going to jump into chapter number chapter number four. And, and yesterday, yesterday, come on, we we learned, we were, the context for yesterday in, in Joshua 3, this is right before Israel is getting ready to, to cross over into the Jordan River. And right before they crossed over, come on, family, do you remember, it's camping season. It's it's camping season that they, they pitch their tent, that they camp so that they can move forward. Can I say this, Mike, can, can I add my little bit of modern application day? They push pause so that they can eventually push play. And maybe in that moment, come on, perhaps that as they receive the instructions where they, where they learned to, to allow the Ark of the Covenant to go first, they received the download that they needed. Can I say this way? They received the revelation that they needed in order to move forward. And could it be that God will cause you sometimes, come on, family, that maybe the interruption in your life is actually the assignment that God is releasing right now. To actually pause so that you can go forward. And so the beautiful thing, we saw that they paused and they were able to go forward. And, and we, 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 we kind of ended, come on, as the priests were crossing over that God told them to stop right in the middle of the river. And, 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 and I just seen a sign right in the middle, they released a praise, right in the middle. And that's where we're gonna pick up today. So if you have your Bible, let's, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Man, I really enjoy, I really enjoy just walking the scriptures with you guys each and every morning. Come on, we're just in week one. This is gonna to continue to get better and better. And Joshua 4, Verse one, I'm going to be reading from the NIV, Joshua four, verse one, and I'm going to be reading from the NIV. It says this family, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, come on, no one left behind. The Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. Come on, take, take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, right in the middle. Take up 12 stones right in the middle. Come on, I, I, I want you to grab some evidence. Come on, somebody. Grab some evidence of the place that God just released you through. Right in the middle. Come on. Has he, can I just park there real quick? Has he been sustaining you? Has he been covering you? Has your God been the Jehovah Jireh that he is, that he's been providing for you? Can I say this? Can I say it this way early in the morning, my friend? My, my, my God has been always releasing bread in your life. You have some evidence around, you have some, some, some fruit around and right in the middle of their storm, right in the middle of the river. Watch the instructions here. Watch as we begin to walk the scriptures. He says, go grab the stones from the middle of the place where you saw God do a breakthrough. Go grab the stones right where the priests are standing, my God. And then he says, watch this. He says, 
and carried them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. Mm. Let, let, let's set this up. Let's frame this real quick, family. Let's talk out real quick. Stones. See, they, they use stones to place a memorial because the stones is a, is a remembrance. It, it reminds Israel of what God has done for them. So they, they would build, they would take the stones and build a memorial. And as they cross and you can see this throughout the scripture, it's, it's a reminder. And even for this, watch the powerfulness. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but watch the powerfulness of this text. If we begin to walk through, they're actually constructing this memorial so that when others come, it's a reminder to them, the ones that's behind them, that God has moved. And whatever that he's doing in your life, he can do it again. It, it, they, they constructed, they took the stones. Come on, can I frame it up for you this way? Could it be that the stones, could the stones be your story? Mm. Could, 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 could the stones be your story in life? I want to frame this up for you. Watch this. He said, take the stones from the middle, mm, in the middle. In the middle. Yeah, take the stones from the middle. Take your story from the middle. Hey, maybe you're in the middle of a Jordan River right now. Maybe this season you're pressing in. You can't see daylight in. You don't understand if you're going to make it in. Whatever that framework could be for you right now, take your story. Mm, take your stone. Watch this. This is not a light stone. This is not a pebble that he said, go get. Study the scriptures closely because it said, carry it, mm, put it on your shoulder. It lets me know this is not a small rock. It lets me know that, that, that this stone has some weight to it. That this stone, they had to put it on their shoulders and they had to, they had to walk with it. Come on. These men got dirty with their stone. <laughs> the stone was weighty. Can I say it this way? Maybe your story feels weighty sometimes. Maybe you feel like your story is kind of heavy. Your story is kind of it's kind of grimy and, and you don't you, you don't fully like it and you don't fully un, un, understand it or maybe you don't appreciate it and maybe you're in a season right now I'm trying to give you a little bit of image a little bit of illustration to go with the scriptures and maybe it's it's just heavy on your shoulder. And, and God is telling them, go grab the stone, mm, go grab the story, and I want you to carry it, watch this family, I want you to carry it to the place where you're going to, where, where, I want you to, let me say it again, I want you to carry it to the place where you're going to lay your head down tonight. I speak a word, my God, I speak a word to everyone that's on the call right now, where you where you've been having you're sleepless and you can't go to sleep because of worry you can't go to sleep because of anxiety you can't go to sleep because you're trying to connect the dots you're trying to wonder if this is the end you're, you're wondering i don't know how i'm going to make it but my god watch the word this is the power of remembrance because God is saying this, take your story and be reminded that I have always been in your life. I have always sustained you. You remember that storm over there? What did I do over there? You remember when you was going through that season? What did your God do over there? Take your story, embrace your story. You might not like every part of your story, but the closer you look and you take a second look, you can see the God print, the DNA all over over your life and God said if I did it back then come on somebody I can do it again I am the creator I'm walking with you take your story and take it to the place where you're getting ready to rest your head see this is why you got to learn how to praise in the middle this is why this is why we lift up our hands and we don't get to the, the uh, we don't wait till we get to the other side this is why whatever you're going through, you have the ability, come on family, to continue to praise God because you are reminded, continue, my God, the gift that you can give yourself today is the gift of remembrance. The gift that you can give yourself today is the beauty to walk in gratitude. 
The gift that you can give yourself today is to dream like you have never dreamed before. Because when you step into a pattern or a posture of remembrance, come on, family, you are reminded that your God is faithful, that your God has sustained you, that your God has been there for you. So I speak to your Jordan River right now. I speak to the very thing that you're crossing right now. And just as it was a flood season for Israel, God was sending you through it. And right in the middle of it, you're going to have some evidence. You're going to pick, you're going to, you're going to pick some stuff up and say, you know what? I need to remember this. I need to remember that God sent me through when I thought, when I thought I was going to lose it all with my finance back there. I remember God stepped in when I was in the hospital and I was, they, they announced me dead and, and I don't know what I was going to do. Come on. God stepped in. In. Is there anybody on this call this morning? Come on. It's 41 people on this call. Put something in the chat for me. Let me know that your God has been faithful to you, that he sustained you. My God, I can see it right now that people have written you off. The enemy has written you off, has cast you to side him, and God stepped in. My God, God stepped in and say you God stepped in and blocked the enemy God stepped in and kept back the rain yes you took some blows but you have no idea my God of the covering that God has placed in your life I just caught this image real quick I remember I remember back when we when we lived at our old house man Pastor Brenda before we moved here and we had this big tree in the yard this huge tree in the yard and I remember I used to be so frustrated with this tree because I had so many leaves in the fall season. And we always had to pick up these leaves. I would rake them up, put them in a bag, and, and the next day, so many leaves, and I was just frustrated. It's time to cut the tree down, babe. So we cut the tree down, and then summertime came around. <laughs> and I, I remember turning to, to Pastor Brenner, babe, why is it so hot out here? And, and I did not realize that the tree that was in my life had such a beautiful covering in the, in the daunting season. It had such a covering. It was so much shade. I, I didn't appreciate the shade until the shade was gone. What, what are you saying, Pastor Anthony? You have no idea of the covering, my God, that is in your life. Uh, what if God would just swoosh away? What if God would release his covering? What if God would say, hey, I'm no longer protecting you? We have no idea of the interruptions that God places in our life, the interceptions that God placed in our life. We have no idea of the devourer that can come in our life and take our joy and take our finances and take our peace. We, we have no idea. So this is why we do this, family. Right in the middle, he's so faithful. Come on, somebody. He, he, he's a faithful God. Come on. Come on. He, he's faithful. I, I can't move from there. I'm trying, I'm trying to get to the next scripture, but somebody needs to hear this this morning because he's a, he's a faithful God. You, you've been giving your enemy too much attention when you need to be falling more in love with your creator because ha, your creator is faithful. Your creator is just. Your creator always has a plan. Can I say it this way? In Lamentations chapter 3, it says it this way. Lamentations, Lamentations chapter 3, the faithfulness, the steadfast, excuse me, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Mm. His mercies never come to an end. Come on, somebody. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is. That's Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, 23, if you need to read that later. Can I say it this way? Can I give you some New Testament? Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same. Come on. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Come on, come on. Yesterday, Jesus is the same. Today, Jesus is the same. Tomorrow, Jesus is the same. I know people may flip and change on you. But thank God that our Savior stays the same. Thank God that he's true. He, he's consistent. He, he has a track record. He never switched. He never fumbles. He stays the same. I can, I can rely on him. Come on. It's, sometimes it's hard <laughs> to rely on people because you don't know if they're going to be there for you. You don't know if they're going to change on you. You don't know if they're going to change their mind. We don't know what side of the bed that they woke up on today. But my God never sleeps. Come on, somebody. Our God never slumbers. 
He stays the same. He's always available. He's always covering. He's always feeding. He's always giving us the sustainable need of what we need. Come on, somebody, to continue to walk in the direction that we need to walk in. See, I, 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 I believe God is teaching us right now or really reminding us to grab our story because you probably wants to push away your story, but God is saying, no, embrace it. Because the more that you embrace it is the more that you will see my thumbprint all over your life. God is saying, I've been with you since you've been a five-year-old. I, I, I've been with you since in your teenage years. Whether you were saved or not, I, I always been with you. Can, you can just go back in your memory right now and, and just begin to say, great is thy faithfulness. Mm. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. You always been faithful to us. And we pick up in verse number four. It says, so Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed for the Israelites one from each tribe. And he said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulders according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve, watch this family, verse number six, to serve as a sign among you. Mm. In the future, when your children ask, what do these stones mean? Mm. For your children is going to look at these stones and they're going to ask, what, what do these stones mean? When, when, when your children look at your story, walk with me, what do these stones mean, Dad? When the next generation that's coming behind you, what, what do these stones mean? God, what these scars that we have? Mm. You got some scars on you right now, don't you? You, 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 you got a scar right here. You got, got, got some bruises right here. I, I love that each scar has a story. Yes. And the scars that you have on your life tells a story. Come on. You, 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 you got some, you, you got some real scars, but even to take it, you got some scars in your life. <laughs> and that scar has a story. And now here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. Walk with me because here's what we're going to do, family. Here's what we're going to do, Celebration Church. Let's create a new pattern because here's what the pattern of what the enemy would love for us to do is to not really fully embrace our story. The enemy wants to silence our story. And so this is what we do in our families. We don't share our story with the next generation. We don't expose our family of the story of what God has done in our life. Maybe sometimes sharing your story brings shame. Mm. Maybe sometimes sharing your story brings guilt. But here's the thing, the beautiful thing about a testimony. A testimony does not actually talk about me. A testimony actually shows who God is. So when you're actually constructing your testimony, it doesn't put the focus on me. It puts the focus on him. It shows that he's faithful. And when we begin to share our story, share from transparency, our pain. Yes, son, I walked through this. But watch how your father, because of God, we overcame this as a family. Come on, somebody. You don't always got to hide everything. God is saying there's healthy transparency. Mm. There's healthy transparency that God wants to teach us. So the things that we share with our, uh, uh, excuse me, with our sons, our daughters, our family, the things that we share with our neighbors, the things that we share with our coworkers, there, then yes, we guide us through wisdom, Holy Spirit. But there's there's purpose in your story. When we learn how to embrace our story, we're actually helping somebody else. See, the enemy wants to mute your story, but God is saying, no, I want to release your story. The enemy wants to silence your story, but God is saying, no, 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 I want to release it because there's something powerful in your story. Family, can I ask you this question real quick? What does your story mean? What, 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 what does your story, what do these stones mean? What does your story mean? 
When you look over your life, what does your story mean? Your story has a why. Your, your story has a purpose. Your, your, your story that when you're walking, you have to be reminded of your why. Hear me today, my friend, never lose your why. Your why becomes your fuel. Come on, somebody. We talked about this last week. Your why becomes your fuel. Of the, it will allow you not to quit. You might not fully understand the process, but you will understand your why. And the closer we get to our why, the, our, the process will actually make more sense. And God is leaning you to lean into your why for your life, for your relationships, for your career path, for these decisions that you have to make. Maybe you have some bold decisions that you have to make. And here, here, here's a great way to, to walk in that and walk with that, even as a business leader, entrepreneur, on your job. Maybe I'm speaking to a CEO and you got some bold decisions to make. Here it is. If, the, if that decision does not line up with your why, you understand the decision that you have to flow in. Maybe there's some relationships that you have to pivot from because it doesn't line up with your why. M maybe there's some resources that God is saying, nah, this is non-negotiable. We, I actually want you to move in this direction because that doesn't line up with your why. See, sometimes your why looks different than somebody else's why. And this is why you can't copy and paste. You got to walk according to your pattern because your pattern may look different than somebody else's pattern. And you're trying to copy and paste somebody else's pattern, but that's not the pattern that God called you to because they have their own why and you have your why. And when you fully embrace your why, you will fully understand your why. And then it's even vice versa. When we embrace our why, we actually get closer to fully embracing the process. Never lose hope of your why. And, and it goes in. Let's pick back up. What do these stones mean? Verse 7, it says, tell them, tell them this. Come on. Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it, craw when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. These mortars uh, for forever. Come on. These stones will, will, will live in our life forever. And I want you to, let, let's go all the way down to verse 24. And here's where we're going to camp out with for the rest of our time. Let's go all the way down to verse, actually verse 23. It says, for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before, before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea mm. when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this. Watch the powerfulness of your story, my friend. He did this so that all the people on the earth might, might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord, your God. Could it be that God sometimes sends fire our way so that he can use that fire to release his glory? Could, could it be that sometimes the enemy can have something set up for bad, for, for, for not for good, and God has a mysterious way to flip it so that he can shine his light and actually show that people that he is your God. He is the God. He is the only one. He stands alone, my friend. And so when we look at our life, this is why we have to embrace it so that God can showcase it because there's people that's watching you and they need to see the God in you. Come on. So if you're taking notes, write this down, family. Write this down. Number one. Your story is your most powerful asset. Your story is your most powerful asset. Here's why. Because it points back to God. Here's why. Because it points back to Jesus. Here's why. Because you can see it. Like I said it before, you can see God's DNA, his thumbprint all over your life. And the more we lean in with a second look, let me let me lean in a little bit closer. 
the more we lean in, I can say, my God, you've been there. You've been over there. I see you over here. And when we embrace it, it actually becomes our most powerful asset. This is where the Holy Spirit moves and guides us. It's through our story. It is our testimony. Can I give you some more scriptures to make, to make sure that we're backing it up correctly? Come on. He overcame by the blood and the work of the, of the what family? Come on. Testimony. It is our testimony of how we overcome. It is not just our word. No, uh-uh. Our word don't have no power. <laughs> only his word. And our word, and only his word, and his word is, is, is our testimony is connected, my God, of his word. If you want to walk in power, release your testimony. You want to walk with power? Come on, release his word. You want to walk in power? Don't just step in your word. I don't want to step in my word. I don't want to step in my wisdom. I don't want to step in uh, under my grace. No, because I don't have no grace. I don't have no wisdom. It's only his wisdom that I want because when we step in his wisdom, now we connect our story to him because our story is our testimony. That's where we overcome. We overcome by the blood of the lamb. We, we overcome because of his testimony. Can I say it this way? Your life is connected to his testimony. Your life is connected to Jesus' testimony. And here's the beautiful thing about your story. Your story is just not to, your story is not just meant to praise God. Your story is also meant to be a witness. Your story is, 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 is this is my witness. I witness God move. I witness God do this in my life. I witness you have you have you have front row seat to the activity that God has done in your life. See, this is why we can camp out at verse 24 and say that all people are going to see because God is lining up his witnesses all through society and he's waiting for the people who have seen him move to release their testimony. Point number two, the great Maya Angelou said it this way, my friend. Point number two, it says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. Whew. There is no greater agony then burn an untold story inside of you. Stop silencing your story, my friend. Embrace your story. Embrace your testimony. You may not fully understand it. You may not fully agree with it. You may, you, you, if you was the true author indeed, you will write it a completely different way. I am right there with you. Come on. I didn't want to go this way, God. And, 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 but God, you, you, you're, you're the author, you're the beginner, you're the finisher. You are the one that's completing it, God. And God is saying, the more we learn how to embrace it, the more that we can actually release it. Let us now walk today in the great agony that Maya Angelou talked about because we refuse to stay silent. No, your neighbor needs to hear about your story. Think that somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear how you overcame. Some, some mergers need to hear, man, how did you guys make it? Now, we're not perfect, but but here's our journey. Single people needs to hear your story. But as a believer and walking in, sometimes it's, it's hard that people need to hear your, your story. Come on. You been, come on, you, you, you're in a season of isolation and you walk that season. People need to hear your story. Come on, you have thoughts of suicidal and you overcame it. People need to hear. Your story, come on somebody, yeah, yeah, you you were in the hospital room and you were left for dead. People need to hear your story because could it be that the seat that you were sitting in five years ago, somebody is sitting in that seat right now. And, and they, they, they need that bread of life that God has given you so that they can eat in a way that they have never eaten before. And God is saying, I need you to release the bread, release the bread so that they can eat, release your story, release your stone so that they can, they can eat in a powerful way. 
I believe this family, when we release our story, we're helping the next generation. I believe when we embrace it, can I say it this way, as I get ready to close, when we embrace our story, family, we meet the new version of ourselves. When we fully embrace our story, we God gives us this gift, my gosh, to actually meet the new version of ourselves. Perhaps it's not too late to meet that new version of yourself. Perhaps you owe that gift to yourself. You owe that to yourself to actually meet the new you. You owe that to yourself that God is saying, I have a new you in store. And that new you comes when you embrace it. You've been walking too long in the old version of you. And here it is today. It is time for an upgrade. And we can praise God. We can lift our hands. We can show up on church on Sunday. But until we be transparent, authentic, and real, not just with God, but real with ourselves. Mm. So we have to stop lying to ourselves. <laughs> we, we, we have to stop. We have, we have to be truthful to ourselves. The more truth, I, I, I read a statistic today. We all tell lies through, throughout the day. Come on, ain't nobody, ain't nobody that holy but Jesus. And the most, the most, the most person we tell lies to on a daily basis, statistics say ourselves. We lie to ourselves the most. I can't do this. I'm not worthy. I'm unqualified. We, we, we beat ourselves down or I'm actually better than what I think I am. Pride. And in the moment we actually become honest with ourselves and honest with God, God shows us a new version of him. Because here's what happens when we're honest and I'm getting ready to camp out and we can pray. When we are honest, this is us laying down ourselves on the altar. This is why we have to return to the altar and lay yourself down. Burn everything that's not of you, God. Burn old habits. Burn old mindsets. Burn the past that doesn't belong to you, God. Burn whatever that's paralyzing me and holding me in a prison Burn it, Lord God, so that it can form me to the very thing that you are pushing and calling me to be. Embrace your story, my friend. Amen. At our time today, I, I think this is very powerful. If I can title this today, embrace your story. That's what I'm praying for today. May you embrace your story like you have never embraced your story before. And hear my heart. As you're walking it through, there will be parts that you do not like. There will be parts that you do not love. You don't have to love something to fully embrace something. Because here's the beautiful thing. Love is not based on a feeling. Love is based on a commitment. God's love is unconditional. It's not based on a condition. It's not based on how you feel. So you can embrace something even if you don't feel something. Mm. And because your love is not based on a feeling, your love is based on a decision. I choose to embrace this. God, give me the strength mm, ah, how to embrace this. There's pain in embracing. It brings up the thoughts when you're embracing. But embrace it because you owe the gift of the new you. Amen. Amen. Amen.